probably 99% of you will know already the we transfer. But I think it's better to remind you everything and uh, show it better. Who knows? Maybe there is something about it you don't know yet. The weight transfer is the weight which acts on the opposite direction of the car. If you turn to the right, the weight goes to the left. If you turn to the left, the weight goes to the right. If you accelerate, the weight goes to the rear. And if you brake, it goes to the front. It's important because it adds which wheel has the greater grip and which wheel has the lower grip. According to that, you know what to do with the steering wheel, throttle and brakes to avoid spinning and maximize the grip for a better corner entry and exit. And it's important for all disciplines like racing, drifting and off-roading. To answer to this question, and to make you understand better, I want to ask you two simple questions and give you 10 seconds to answer to both. Just use your logic. Ready? Generally, sport and race cars have soft or stiff suspension and dampers. And uh, generally, sport and race cars are tall or low. answer to the first question is stiff. Why? Because thanks to stiff suspensions you limitate the weight transfer. Higher is the weight transfer effect, lower will be the speed of the direction changes and of course the car will handle worse. With stiff suspensions your car reacts quicker to the solicitations of the steering wheel, making it more reactive but also more nervous because the suspensions don't absorb anymore the effects of the weight transfer. For the lateral roll of the car, use the anti-roll bar. If it's stiff, the car won't suffer the lateral roll, but it will slide more. If it's softer, the car will roll more, but as I told you before, it will be slower at the direction changes. As I told you in my previous setup videos, a stiffer rear anti-roll bar will make the car oversteer, while a stiffer front anti-roll bar will increase the understeer, which is easier to handle, and I recommend this uh, to beginners and amateurs. For the second question, if the sport and race cars are tall or low, the answer is obviously low. Why? The answer is the center of gravity. Every car has its own center of gravity, but be careful. Two cars, which are, for example, 1 meter and 50 centimeters tall, could have different center of gravity. That's because the center of gravity is influenced by the mass of the vehicle. If the mass of the vehicle is concentrated on the car's floor, the center of gravity will be lower. For example, for that reason electric cars, despite the excessive weight, drive so good on corners. Batteries, which are quite heavy and some cars could reach even 400 kg, are placed on the car's floor. So even a Tesla Model X could have similar center of gravity of a Toyota GT86. But let's return to the high-low cars. Generally, race cars are lower compared to the, the road counterparts, because this makes their center of gravity lower. Yeah, that improves uh, their aerodynamics as well on straight lines. 
but the major reason is to make them faster on corners. So, finally, to answer to the question which cars are most susceptible to weight transfer, the answer is street legal cars, because they are generally higher with softer suspension for the passenger's comfort. This doesn't mean uh, race cars like GT3 aren't affected by the weight transfer. On the contrary, professional drivers use a lot the weight transfer to make their car faster on corners. Do you remember this example? You can use it to introduce the car into the corner. You know, if you brake and turn the steering wheel immediately, you start over steering before the corner, because the rear tire loses grip. Chronologically speaking, this is every step you have to follow. Before a corner, start braking. Start turning while braking. Feel the rear which is losing the grip. Regulate the contest steering to avoid spinning. If you want to be fast, you have to feel a light oversteer every time before every corner. This will help you to enter the corner faster. This technique is called lift off oversteer and it's applied thanks to the weight transfer. But as I remind you, as always in my videos, never forget the rule, slow in, fast out. If you don't respect it, your exit will be slower. If you want to exit faster from a corner with modern cars and high downforce cars like GT3 and Formula 1, try to avoid the power oversteer. You must feel the understeer pushing you out to the corner. In that way, you know you're exploiting the full grip of your car. As you know, all cars are different, and obviously they don't have exactly all their weight homogeneously distributed on all four wheels. Some cars are heavier on the front. Others are heavier on the rear. If you're lucky, you can find cars which are perfectly balanced 50-50 between rear and front. So, because of that, you understand you can't drive all cars in the same way. If a car is heavier on the front, and uh, this happens in 100% uh, of cases on uh, front-wheel drive cars, you must increase the oversteering effect while entering corners. If a car is heavier on the rear, you have to limit the oversteer and trying to accentuate more the understeer by turning slower the steering wheel and being more sensitive with brake and throttle. Applying these rules won't just make you faster, but also it will improve the tire's wear, 
making it more homogeneous on all four wheels. So keep in mind the weight balance of your car before choosing it for a race. In any case, in race events, try to prefer lightness over horsepower, power, because the heavier is the car, the more weight will be transferred to the inside to the outside, reducing the total grip of the car. The opposite uh, occurs uh, for a lighter car. Because of the weight transfer, the geometry of your car becomes asymmetrical, especially on the contact with the ground. While cornering the outside wheels to the corner, don't touch all the ground with all their surface. For that reason, we must decrease the camber, setting it to a negative value to allow all the surface of the wheel to touch the ground, ensuring the maximum grip to the outside wheel to the corner. Because, as you know, the outside wheel to the corner gets the higher weight, so the higher grip. Considering the front wheels at the task to turn the car, the camber must be more negative on the front than the rear wheels. Just a little curious fact about camber. Back in 2001, uh, Mercedes built the F400 carving concept, which had an active camber control. Thanks to this element, this concept uh, had a superior grip and a higher lateral g-force, 30% uh, higher compared to the average cars of those years. I think if you applied uh, this system plus uh, uh, the four-wheel steering system, I think uh, you will get the perfect Henley car ever made. The weight transfer has an effect also on the grip uh, in acceleration because, as you know, we don't accelerate just on straight line. We accelerate while cornering as well. And if you accelerate while cornering because of the weight transfer, there will be the inside wheel to the corner which will have less grip and because of that, uh, if you press the throttle, this will result in a wheel spin, so in a loss of traction, so in a loss of time in a corner's exit. To fix this issue, we can use the limited slip differential to distribute the power and the torque between the left and the right wheels, according to the amount of grip due to the weight transfer. As you can see, the knowledge of weight transfer helps you to manipulate the car as you want. When you choose your car, when you set it up, uh, when you drive it, for that reason it's important to know its effect. I hope uh, this video has been helpful for you. Thank you for watching and uh, see you in my next video.